Hi gang, Rob here, coming to you in the morning of 19 January 2017 with a From the Sharpening Bench video. Seems like forever since I've made a From the Sharpening Bench video, <clears throat> but today, uh, due to my own poor planning, I am fresh out of 220 Edge Pro Stone, so I'm not sharpening, I'm making some videos. Uh, yeah, I forgot to call Edge Pro on Friday, and Monday there was no mail. <laughs> so, I'm a little behind. Not to worry, though. My turnaround time at the sharpening bench is still right at four weeks, so don't be alarmed, sharpening customers. Uh, today, we're going to look at a knife from a new company, which is why I'm sort of interested in doing this video. From Giant Mouse Knives comes the Giant Mouse GM1. Kind of an interesting story, and I'd kind of like to know the rest of it. But <clears throat> here's, here's what I do know, just from uh, doing a little quick online research. Giant Mouse Knives is an American LLC registered in California. The knives are all designed by Jesper Voxness and Jens Anso. So Danish designers, American company, and in looking through their, uh, their Our Story page of their website, these knives, knives are not customs, so uh, Jens and Jesper have not touched these knives in their manufacture. They are not mid-techs, they are production knives, but production knives of very low number. <clears throat> Their stated plan is to produce each model one time in runs of three to four hundred pieces as a production run. And then the first 25% of those will be special and numbered specially, um, so they might be worth a little more than the regular production run. Um, manufacture, at least for this one, is done in, in Maniago, Italy. So, and the design uh, says Voxness all over it, doesn't it? And if it looks a lot like a Viper produced Voxness design, that's because it is a Viper produced <laughs> Voxness design. Um, <clears throat> N690CO steel. Uh, very familiar titanium construction, very familiar pocket clip, but this is not a Viper. This is a giant mouse, okay? So what, what do we got here? What do we got here? First, let's go through the box, shall we? Uh, a corrugated cardboard flip-top box <clears throat> with a nice little cotton baggie with a drawstring with a giant mouse logo. Got a little button with the giant mouse logo and a sticker with the giant mouse logo as well as a card. Feel free to pause and read. Okay. Now, I don't know really what makes this knife different than a Viper version of a Vox design, but. Uh, it seems to have a lot of the same qualities. So let's talk about this one dimensionally. We talked about materials a little bit. Uh, the handle length on this one is 4.7 inches long. Uh, I would guess this a little under half an inch thick. Uh, the blade length is 3.3 inches and it's made of 4 millimeter or 157 Five thirty seconds of an inch stock, nice crown spine, jimping in kind of an interesting place. A very high, almost full flat ground blade, well over an inch broad. A bronze anodized titanium frame with blue anodized hardware. The lockup on this one is achieved with benefit of a hardened steel lock bar insert which also if you look at the tab in the slot serves as an over travel stop 
mechanically. It is <clears throat> a ball bearing pivot. The ball bearings are captured in a steel ring. The races or the washers behind backing up the, uh, the ball bearings are hardened steel with a radius groove cut in them. They're very thick. They're apparently very hard and they give a glass-like smoothness. Just very well done as we're, as we're uh, used to seeing from Maniago produced knives. The blade shape is kind of a, a fat truncated Warncliffe. <laughs> Uh, if you took a, a Sebenza Insingo blade and shrunk it, uh, if you sort of squished it <laughs> and made it fat top to bottom, that's sort of what this blade is. Um, and you, you guys are going to have to make your own judgments uh, on that blade shape. Frankly, I think it's kind of ugly, <clears throat> but it's also very functional. The very gradual primary bevel grind uh, and a relatively thin dimension behind the edge and that just gradual belly make it an excellent slicer. Of course that M690 CO steel has something to do with that too. Watch this push cut. Really watch the push cut. <laughs> I promise. It's so hard to do in front of the camera. Yeah. just an excellent slicer although I don't think it's visually stunning <clears throat> the pocket clip is a milled titanium clip and you know so many of Viper's knives in the last few years have been tip up left or right hand carry and then starting with the Fortis this year it's right hand only and this giant mouse knife is also right hand only uh, the clip actually works better than it looks like it would. It makes contact only on the lock bar, which gives you very little run up, but it does come in and out of the pocket very well. It doesn't look like it would, so it must have adequate flex, and it does. Um, flipping action is excellent. It does not have a depth detent, so it can be thumb actuated in the teardrop shaped hole rather easily even with the, the right hand. The action of the knife is so good it just doesn't need a uh, it doesn't need a uh, a lock closed detent ball to be able to flip well. It's just very nice. Works well on a push button and with that big old three foot long flipper tab it should light switch well and it does. That's a long flipper tab. As, as our friend Nick Shabazz would say, a pocket packer. And that might be the knock on this knife ergonomically when you consider how broad it is in this dimension and then add on the, the length of that, that flipper. It's a big knife in pocket. Um, what is it, like 5.4 ounces? Let's talk about these ergos. If I come back in a a saber grip, kind of interesting, a well-designed handle. It's three fingers inside the butt and then uh, a nice pinky rest, so it's a four-finger knife. And then if you come forward into the choil, oh, now we see why that jimping's there. For some powerful utility cutting, nicely done. A hammer grip is very comfortable. Not super comfortable, my pinky's sort of searching for where to be. It's it's either too long or too short in that grip, but not horrible. Draw cut grip is very good. Reverse cut grip or reverse grip is interesting. Again, it's sort of the same as the hammer grip. It's either too long or too short. Notice my index finger wants to land right on that point. And in the vertical draw cut grip, pretty good. Is this point is getting me a little bit but. so you know ergonomically not superb but not horrible either <clears throat> so mechanically the action is very good I will give it that um, 
But frankly, it's got an issue with lockup that I don't typically see on Maniago frame locks. But uh, let's kind of look at this. What would you call that lockup, guys? Five to ten percent, uh, which is a little scary to me because. Let's see if I can get you a good picture. Yeah. Take a look at the geometry right here of that lock face. Um, thank goodness it's radius because it's very steep. Uh, the good news is once you get over here to the right side, which is where the lock bar engages, it's almost dead flat. So I guess it has to lock up early to avoid slip, but my goodness, that is early. That is hanging by a thread. And uh, I did have this knife apart for a spa treatment. And I've got these scales shifted as far as they can, which isn't far because the construction is uh, so tightly fitted. But I've got them shifted this way as far as I can to let that lock bar engage as far as possible. And that's it. Um, which resulted in... Uh, it's... It's pretty close to perfectly centered, but it does favor the offside just the slightest. Which, and I've got the pivot down, you know, as tight to the ball bearings as I am comfortable with. But man, I tell you what, if that lock was any earlier, it, it wouldn't be locked. Um, I would prefer that they had used a more straight line geometry and a much 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 more gradual angle and let that steel lock bar insert come over about to 50 percent because you know steel lock bar inserts on hardened steel blade tangs will slip if the if the geometry is too steep so, uh, yeah, i don't know i did a, i did a couple of soft spine wax fingers out of the blade channel just sort of on my arm and it never failed I mean I didn't whack it that's about as hard as I hit it so it didn't pop off like uh, like some knives do but it doesn't inspire confidence also uh, my customer had indicated uh, that the pivot loosens rather early in you know you put the put the knife together and you assemble it and adjust it and the, after just a few flips it seemed to loosen on him um, I've got a bunch of blue Loctite in there it seems to be holding okay but I did notice a very loose very loose thread fit from the male to female side of the pivot which uh, when you have a loose thread fit on an adjustable screw so it's not a screw that you're going to lock down tight with torque um, you're going to have it move when you have a blade rotating and then impact. Um, it's just going to move. So we'll see how our blue thread locker does. If that doesn't work, uh, he may need to go to some Teflon tape or something to take up that gap. So, um, so these sold, and they're sold out. They sold for $325, which is, uh, well, it's considerably more than, let's look at Viper's last similar offering, which is the Fortis which I think was a sub $200 knife. Um, so this knife, you know, over $100 more, over 30% more. You know, are buyers going to see value in that? In the, the limited production nature of the model? <clears throat> Is that going to translate to sales for Giant Mouse? when we're used to being able to buy knives from the same designers from Viper for vastly less money and you're basically buying the same knife I don't know uh, I don't know don't know how that's gonna work you know do I see three hundred twenty five dollars of value you know scarcity not not considered I don't. I, you know, I, I see this as a $200 knife, not a $325 knife. 
just compared to other things that come out of the same place, similar, similarly constructed with similar materials. So I don't know. We'll have to sort of keep an eye on Giant Mouse to see what designs, collaborations are produced, to see if they uh, have some staying power. This was an idea that Jens and Jesper had apparently while they were drinking in a bar in 2014. So you know, not all great ideas are conceived by guys talking while drinking in bars, but you never know. This might be one of them. Uh, is the GM1 a good knife to have if you can buy one on the secondary market and pay a little less than they were new? I think so. And did I mention it cuts real well? Because it does cut real well. Uh, the lock issue is bothersome. I'm sure they're not all like this. I hope they're not all like this. Um, but other than that, pretty solid effort from Jens, Jesper, and the boys in Maniaga. Oh, I didn't mention. You know, because I looked at this broad blade and saw some pretty raw slicing geometry, I just couldn't help myself. I had to lay that secondary bevel back to 15 degrees per side and put on a little 18 degree micro bevel. It just seemed to be screaming for it. Because it's a slicer. If I didn't mention it's a slicer. <laughs> it's such a slicer. Thought you guys would like to see it. Keep your eye on this company. Could be interesting. That's all for this one, boys. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and the giant mouse GM1 are sharp.